Finding your style is so simple. It can be done in two steps. And I'm gonna share examples from finding my clothing style to finding my style as an artist to finding my home decor style. So this can be applied to any of those. And if you're looking for your style in a different situation, I would love to know what that is. So drop that in the comments. These steps can actually be done in whichever order you want, but I'm going to share the order that I did it in, but it might actually be easier to start with the second step that I mentioned. And first, I feel like you're going to hate me for this, but the first step is to declutter. But hear me out because we want our style to be something that we like, right? So you probably already have stuff that's in your style because you already gravitate towards that. And can you break out of your style sometimes? Yes, absolutely, in any of those three categories. So the hardest part is not finding your style, it's getting rid of stuff that's not your style. I made this quick little visual to illustrate this and it may not be perfect, but I think you'll get the idea. So you have all of these different colors and styles and outfits. And then when you start to go through and get rid of some, that's when your style emerges and really shines through. So this is more comfortable and muted colors, but still cute and sophisticated and classy. But if we got rid of different ones, then we would end up with this more chic and trendy and daring style. Sometimes we may feel drawn to multiple styles, but we don't use them or we don't love them as much. Okay, let me just give examples. So when I went through my clothing, I had so much. I had everything. People would give me clothes. And so if it was like close to fitting, then I would keep it. And I had like 14 pairs of jeans or more. Now I have like two. So when you declutter, you start to find the things that spark the most joy. So I realized, okay, I don't like things that are uncomfortable, which this is hilarious because this is a very scratchy sweater, <laughs> but that's why I'm wearing a shirt underneath. So there are some ways around certain things, but I realized that some of my requirements are, it has to be easy, like it's not gonna wrinkle super easily because I travel so much and I'm also lazy as in I'm not going to iron my clothing and a lot of times I'm just at home but I also don't want to just be a wrinkled mess at home. So that is one of the main things and that's part of why I love shopping at thrift stores because I'm like if it is wrinkly on the hanger at the thrift store then it will be wrinkled at my house probably. So that's one way to eliminate certain choices. I don't want clothing that's too tight and restrictive. I don't want anything that's too low and I'm like nervous I'm gonna be falling out. Like I want to be able to move around freely. I'm, you know, pretty active. This was a terrible outfit choice for a style video. Ugh. Anyway, let's go with it. Okay, um, what else? So I love really soft materials and it's so weird because it's like, I should have known that already, but I didn't take it in, into account when I was purchasing clothing. Now it's like, oh, this is an easy way to eliminate something. Like it's not comfortable, but I do still keep some things like blazers. I have, well, I think I'm just keeping one that's kind of restrictive, but it's still so cute and I just wear it for events or something. I learned that, well, I may have already known that I really like dresses. Okay, that's enough about clothing and decluttering. I have so many videos about decluttering and uh, actually I will link to the one about my five of everything clothing method because you just choose your favorites 
instead of having to go through and choose what you're eliminating, you're focusing on what you get to keep and what is exciting to you. And that's a fast way to really recognize your style. I realized I love patterns and I love lots of different colors, but I don't like the combination of bold colors and busy patterns in one outfit. I don't like a lot of attention. So I love it on other people. Don't get me wrong. That was so helpful to learn and I didn't learn it until I was decluttering. I was going to say that doesn't really apply to art, but honestly, <laughs> Art supplies, if you declutter those, then you definitely realize what type of art you want to focus on more and gravitate towards more and which mediums you want to use. So that actually can be helpful in art as well. Here's another quick illustration. I painted all of these, but if I were trying to focus on a style, maybe for Instagram or for my website, then I would curate it a little bit more. So a few things I could do is I could just group together the ones of people or just the ones that have writing in them, which I have more like that, or just the ones with the really bright, cheerful colors. And the same for home decor. If you start getting rid of a lot of the bolder patterns and everything, then maybe you are more drawn towards neutral. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say is I've heard people ask a lot, like how to find your style as a minimalist. It's the same for how to find your style as a maximalist. And if you are wanting to change your style, then you can still do kind of the same thing. Assuming you already have some items that are in your style, focus on those and then start adding to it. But that kind of leads into the second step of the process, which you could also do these in reverse order. But I really learned this from being a business owner. I am a photographer and a watercolor artist. And so for both of these, there are two things that I did in this step. So I attended a branding workshop in person that was so helpful and amazing. And it was from someone whose brand I really like. I'm like, wow, her images are always beautiful. The colors are so lovely. And she was very helpful and it was fun being there with a group of other women who were doing the same thing. And she had us choose three different businesses that we like their branding and they have a strong branding. And so even though their branding was different than ours or like their style was different than ours, we could still gain something from each one of them and learn something from them. So you can do the same if you're finding your clothing style or decor style or art style. Find three other people that you really like their style. Then it's a lot easier to mimic that, mimic the parts that you do like and identify with and want to be your own style. And then just let go of the things that you don't want to incorporate into your style. So then you can also choose three to five words. And this was from a photography workshop, I believe, that I attended where they recommended for making your website or whatever to choose three to five words that describe your business and how you want it to be. And this can go along with even your personality type. This is from simplicable.com. And I will link to it because it has 160 words to describe style. So you can look through those and they are listed alphabetically. But it says, style is creative consistency over time. This can be applied to any creative work, such as fashion, music, art, design, and literature. Likewise, Style can be used to describe the presence of a person, such as their character. Style or personal branding isn't just about how it looks, but how it makes you feel. And that goes along with 
personality, how you treat other people, and not that one is better than the other, but you know, some people are loud and more talkative, and other people may be quiet and more soothing. And you don't have to try to figure out which one is better and be that, be who you are, but recognize who you are. I like talkative and quiet people. Even though I might be more on the quiet side, that doesn't mean I only identify with quiet people and can only relate and learn from them. So anyway, kind of strange for a <laughs> style video, but it really does relate because your personality can go into the clothing and decor and kind of art that you like and create. So I do like softer clothing. I like softer home decor. I love having a white bedspread. It just always looks clean and fresh and I am not great at putting colors together otherwise I feel like but anytime I put on a white bedspread, it's just easy and done. And I love looking at other people who have this amazing color coordinated, beautiful bed set up. But for me, it's just the white is <laughs> what works, even if it isn't completely made up. Okay, let me show you this. I'll take my lens cap off and well, whatever. I'll just leave my husband's shirt. <laughs> That's how it is really normally. Okay. So even though the bed isn't made, look at that, not bad, I don't hate it. I have like fallen into the trap where I will go and see these beautiful colorful bedspreads and I now know, just don't buy them. <laughs> so maybe one day, but right now, I'm keeping it simple. So here is kind of what I came up with for my art style and a lot of this happens over multiple years. I started watercolor in the summer of 2022 and I just the other week put these three words down as my art style and that is cheerful, cozy, minimalist and that is kind of how my clothing style is and my home decor style too because yes I'm minimalist but I have lots of pops of color and that's through my art and little decorations and everything. It's not, it's not completely neutral, but it does have a bit of neutral. Uh, and then same with my clothing. You can even see it back here where I have these florals with lots of colors. Or like this is kind of a muted color, but it's not just white or cream or gray. And then this one, even though it is a super bright color, it does not have a pattern with it. And then this is just so cozy. I love it. Especially fall, I mean, cozy, 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 but also cheerful. So that can be so helpful. And so you may already have some words in mind. You can also, you know, go on Pinterest and find the different clothing styles. And the reason this pairs so well with decluttering is because you might love and admire these like dressier, um, more form-fitting clothing items, but when you put them on, you don't like how they feel, or maybe you feel overdressed for what you're doing or where you're going, or you're staying at home and you're getting annoyed because you're always staining these really nice clothes. Okay, let me show you how fun this is. I just went to Pinterest quickly. So I typed in cozy fashion and got this. It's a lot more fall stuff. So if I wanted specifically cozy items for summer, I would type that cozy summer. 
fashion. And then I typed in minimalist fashion and this came up. So some of it is kind of similar. I'm also wondering if because I'm recording this when it's fall, if that's why it's giving me more fall types of clothing. But then I typed in cheerful fashion and this popped up. And while I would not wear very many of these, there is the one with the blue background where she's wearing a hat and the yellow skirt and blue stripes. Since it's only two colors, I would actually wear that one. So it can give you some ideas and it can help you find some commonalities or if there is a part of your style that you want it, you don't want to be like that all the time, but you want one good outfit for that occasion or whatever, then you can still look that up. But that's also really great inspiration for even like my art and everything. So the cheerful one, it really throws off the, doesn't throw off my style, but it actually helps clarify it because if I can find one example that is all three, if it's minimalist, cozy, and cheerful, then that's when I know I have really nailed it. So let's start with cheerful art next. I definitely love those, but you can still see some of the minimalist aspects because it has like a blank background. It's not just completely busy on some of these. And one of them is even more of like neutral, but it's cheerful because it's a flower kind of thing. And then minimalist art. I actually made a painting that's kind of like that white rainbow and then cozy art. Oh my goodness. And actually, let me show you the one that I found. I scrolled down on all of these as well, but look at this sitting in the window. So I think this one is all three and I pinned it to my artboard. But it's cheerful because it's brighter, happier colors. It's like a lot of light in the picture. It's minimalist because it has more muted tones and only a few. So yes, there's like orange and blue and cream, but they're much more neutral versions of those colors. And there aren't like 30 bold colors or even just 30 regular colors. I mean, there are different shades of the same colors, but anyway, okay. So that covers minimalist and cheerful. So cozy, I mean, it has books, it has a blanket, it has a sweater, it has fall, that's just cozy anyway. <laughs> but a pillow, so much of that is cozy. Oh, and then uh, flowers again, so cheerful. So I am like, oh, I should try to paint something similar. And then I typed in cozy decor. This one, the ad kind of ruined the vibe of the page because a lot of them were the dark twinkle lights and more like a nook. And then there would be this bright, like minimalist picture you can see in this picture. But minimalism and coziness do kind of go together to me anyway, because it's not very cozy when you have to move all your crap off of your couch or your bed to sit down with a cup of coffee and read a book. And then I put in minimalist decor and this popped up, which I do love. It's so peaceful and tranquil, but it's still a lot of stuff. So it isn't like completely empty and lifeless. So it fits in with the cozy, cheerful stuff still to me. And then I typed in cheerful decor and I actually went and pinned like three or four of these as well because I don't have a ton of this, especially because I can't paint my walls as a renter. I am keeping these for one day when I do own a house and I don't think I would go wild, but I might have one area or instead of doing a whole wall, maybe I would just do paint a shelf or something with some bolder patterns and colors. I love that little rug. And then also this kind of stuff can be inspiration for cheerful art as well. So I could just paint this little sun thing instead of on a wall, just put it in a small frame and hang it up in my room. 
So that was kind of surprising and fun. Oh, but I scrolled down on this one too. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is everything. <laughs> so I need to copy this basically. I guess this was under cozy probably because it has cozy in the title. But look how cheerful that is with those flowers. And they are a nice pop of color. And then it's pretty minimalist. I mean, it may not look like it, but it's minimalist again in the colors that are neutral and not a ton of them, not a bunch of patterns. I just want to live there. <laughs> so I would love to know if this sparked any ideas for you, what three to five words or even just one word that came to mind while watching this video that you would say defines your style and let us know if that's more your clothing style or your artistic style or your home decor style or if it could kind of go for all three. I can't wait to see. Oh, I, I always I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see how it goes for you. And then I'm like, how am I going to see that? But I would love it if I could. Okay, 